All right, so here we are for another sneaky video. You see this? This isn't coffee, oh no. This is some tea, and I'm about to give you my hot take. Today's video is gonna be the absolute sneakiest, shadiest, no good secrets your favorite artists on social media are doing every day. I'm talking YouTube, I'm talking Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. <laughs> Scratch that, nobody's on Facebook anymore. Now before you tell me to get off my high horse, I'm gonna admit, I'm coming clean, mea culpa. I'm just as guilty of every single one of these infractions, but that's kind of the point of this video and why I wanna share it all with you because this video is gonna be kind of like a PSA so we can all stop feeling crappy about our art and start giving ourselves permission to cut ourselves some slack. Okay, so let's jump right into it with the first one that will have you giving all of your favorite content creators the side eye. One, the color secret. A couple of months ago, I was doing what I usually do, creating art, posting it on Instagram, sharing it with my community and with my followers, when all of a sudden I got a DM from a young artist who sounded kind of discouraged. No matter what I do, I just can't get my paintings to pop like I see yours popping when I'm looking at your work on Instagram. At first, I was convinced this artist was using lower quality paints, but after chatting for a bit, I realized that they actually had been using the same brands as me in exactly the same colors. But it's not just your art, they said. All of my favorite art creators have these colors that pop more than any painting I'm able to create. Okay, ready for this one? Here's the deal color correction. Well, isn't that cheating, Margo? It depends. In today's age, most of the art that we experience is online. And so digitization isn't just a means to an end. It's also what I consider an integral part of the process. And that includes stylistic choices and editing required to make the colors either truer to life or in some cases, more saturated and vibrant for screens. Personally, I call it an extension of the craft of artistry. Photos and scans rarely capture the original with perfect accuracy. So most of the time, the process of bringing a work made from paper and pigment to screens requires some sort of translation or adaptation to this kind of format. And to be honest, once we enter the digital world, it's kind of at the artist's discretion as to how much they want to tweak the original. This is true for static art like paintings, but it's also true for videos. Here's what this video looks like without any post-production to brighten it up. The colors are a little bit off. It's possibly a little bit too dark. It's just not as enjoyable to look at and definitely doesn't look like what it would look like if you were standing in this room right next to me. Don't just take my word for it. I mean, look to Hollywood and see the color effects they apply to a movie like The Matrix versus a Wes Anderson movie. I don't personally think it's cheating if you're using editing as a tool to transform or to elevate what you create. And furthermore, if you're gonna produce your artwork for any kind of print job, you sure as hell will wanna take color correction and color management seriously, but that's an entirely different topic for a whole other video. So next time you see yourself wondering how on earth your favorite artists got their colors to pop so much on their latest Instagram post, or how your favorite influencer has the most amazing tush, yeah. just remember that things aren't always as they seem. Okay, now we're on to the second sneakiest art creator secret of all time. This one I think will be controversial, and yet I really strongly feel that it shouldn't be. Just because someone is a teacher doesn't mean that they are above you. Just because someone has 100,000, 200,000, you know, million followers doesn't mean that their art is more valuable than yours. And just because someone sells their art for X amount of money, it doesn't make their art better than yours because art isn't measured in that way. So we're kind of at a weird period in history where most artists are sharing their work on platforms like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and we're able to get real-time responses on what we create by family, friends, fans, you name it. And that is so different to how artists used to create and share their work for centuries. 
So I'm not gonna be one of those people who complains about new technology and how much it's killing our brains and our kids and our attention spans and artificial intelligence is gonna ruin our lives. And oops, I don't have a problem with the good side of what modern technology gives us, but the slippery slope begins to happen when you start to compare yourself to others. And um, these frankly, irrelevant metrics that can start to influence your sense of self-worth. And worse yet, they can even push you to make artistic choices to satisfy the need for validation. Yes, I get it. Getting likes and comments or approval from people is so satisfying and validating, but validation doesn't really have a purpose other than serving your ego. Think of it this way. A person picking their nose can get a million likes. Yeah! Or a tiny hamster eating a miniature burrito. That's so cute. Like. But just because a post has 200,000 likes, does that actually make it thoughtful, inspired, and compelling? I don't know. Who am I to judge? This can be shelved on the eternal what is art debate. And all I can tell you is that, in my opinion, Art should be internally motivated instead of externally. And I know this may sound like such a no duh kind of thing, but I feel like more and more now in this day and age, we kind of need a little reminder of that. All right, and we're down to my last sneaky, sneaky secret. This is gonna be another controversial one, and I am so going to attract the angry mob with pitchforks for this one. So let's just get it over with. So I feel like especially in places where there's educational content, so teachers online um, and in person, YouTube tutorials, books, a lot of people drum up technique like it's the only thing you need to master in order to become a good artist. And I see so many new artists fall into the trap of wanting to get things done right. And I get it, you wanna do a good job, you wanna improve, you wanna be a real artist. And in order to feel like you're doing it right, you may find yourself gripping your paintbrush. Your knuckles are turning white because you're putting all this pressure on yourself to have good technique. Technique, technique, technique. Drills, drills, drills. Control your water, control your color scheme. Are you getting stressed yet? I know I am. And here's where I think things go off the rails. I don't think that the ultimate goal of becoming a great artist should be all about becoming a technical genius. Yes, technique is important. I mean, I didn't bother getting a fine arts degree to say technique doesn't matter at all. But what I'm saying is that technique is just a tool, a means to an end. And we often forget what that end should be. And many, not all, but many teachers talk about technique as if that's the finish line to this race. And I'm here to tell you that it isn't. And there isn't even a race to begin with. The goal is expression, not perfection. Every piece of art, whether it's a painting, a song, a sculpture, a dance, has the power to make you feel something. Joy, sadness, stillness, fear, emotion. It's not about how many brush strokes you can fit on a canvas or the specific ASTM rating of your paints. It's about delivering a human experience. Think about your favorite art by your favorite artist or your favorite song of all time. Why do you love it? I'm pretty sure it's not because of how many scales the pianist you know, practiced or did during the piece. It's about the feeling, the human experience that it brings out in you. So technique is just the language to get you there. You need it to be understood, but it's not the whole story. And if all you do is obsess over spelling and grammar, you'll forget that you actually have a story of your own to tell. So my advice to you would be, yes, of course, continue learning and sharpening your technical language, but follow your gut too. Don't lose sight of why we're all in this in the first place and that joy and connection you absolutely have the power to give at 
any stage of your art journey. So let me know in the comments what you think. I think it's gonna be a field day down there, so I'm kind of scared to look after this video is over. But that's one of the things that I love so much about artists and art in general, is the fact that we are all coming from such different places in our journey, different opinions, different ways of doing things and looking at those things, and all that lends itself to the diversity and the beauty of everything that, that we all create. So even though I, I might get in trouble, I am certainly looking forward to the dialogue. And if you haven't already seen it, I will link another video right here on a slightly similar topic so we can keep this conversation going. As always, thank you so much for watching and for joining me on these art videos. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one.